Okay, so now let's actually take a look at how to graph parabolas just in general. Someone gives you a quadratic and you want to graph it. Well, there's two basic ideas. First of all, one idea is to find the, the, the vertex of the parabola. That's where the parabola you know, changes from either going down to up or up to down, depending upon whether it's a happy face or a sad face parabola. So that vertex sort of anchors things in, and then you know where the axis of symmetry is. So that's pretty cool. But you know, sometimes another thing that's really useful, if you can find it, to sort of basically solidify how the parabola is curving, whether it's sort of like this or a very tight one, sometimes an easy way of doing that is to find the, the x-intercept. So set that, set that equation equal to 0 and find two other anchor points. And that actually will really help you solidify the parabola you know, to get a sense of you know, how it's curving. For example, it could be like this, or maybe those points were closer together, and so it's even sharper. Or maybe they're further apart, so they're sort of further out. So in fact, a neat thing to do if you can is to first of all find the vertex. That's pretty cool, because then you know exactly this point, and then you know how it spreads out. But then to get a better sense of the spread, whether it's like this or this, try, if possible, to find the x-intercept. And if not, then maybe just plot one point, and then you'll get a real sense of how it looks. Let's take a look at some examples and see this, this idea in action. So let's suppose we look at f of x equals minus 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 2. OK, well, now uh, how would I graph this? Well, actually, this is in standard form, so this is great. I can just read off the vertex pretty easily. So the vertex is going to be negative that number. So it's going to be minus 3, comma 2. So that's pretty easy, right? If I'm going to now look at my axes, <laughs> you can look at my axes, but don't tell anyone I showed you. What I'm seeing is the following. Here's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and so forth. We see minus 3, 2, 1, 2, right there. That's the vertex. And I also see it's a, it's a sad face problem because that negative sign is there. So in fact, this is going to be sort of a, an unhappy thing. It's going to look like this somehow. OK, but how is it going to bend? Is it like wide like this, or is it tight like this? Well, uh, one way to figure that out is to find the x-intercept. So let's actually just find the x-intercepts right now. So how would I find the x-intercept? I want to see where this curve is going to cross the x-axis. That happens at a height of 0. So in fact, the y will be 0. So to find the x-intercept, what you always want to do is take whatever you have and set it equal to 0 and solve for those x's. And that's where the, the line, the, the function will cross the x-axis. So let's just take this and set it equal to 0. And I'm going to show you a really uh, cool way of solving this. OK, the first thing I can do is factor out a 2 everywhere. When I factor out this common factor of 2, I would see the following. 2 times. And if you'll permit me, I'd like to write this term first. So I'm just going to switch the order of these things. So I'm going to write 1. And why do I write 1? Because I have to distribute that 2 to get that 2 here. And then a minus, and then I have x plus 3 squared equals 0. So all I did was factor out the common factor of 2. Whoop, and this wrote these things in reverse order. Where did that 1 come from? Well, just distribute that 2, and you'll see that that 1 times 2 gives me that 2 right there. If I didn't put that in there, I'd lose that 2. There's an invisible factor of 1 always multiplying that 2. So when I factor out the 2, I get a 1. OK, now I can divide both sides by the 2, and that goes away. So that's pretty cool. So I'm just left with 1 minus x plus 3 squared equals 0. Now why do I like this? Well, because this actually can be factored. It's the difference of two perfect squares. 1 squared and that thing squared. So in fact, now I'm in really good shape. Because in fact now, in fact, let me just, I can even cover this up. Now what I can do is just factor. And you got to be careful when you're factoring this kind of thing. You have 1 plus that thing times 1 minus that thing. And that equals 0. Ooh. That's a 0. That's a 0. OK, now look. So what I have here is this thing times this thing equals 0. So either this equals 0 or that's 0. Now what is this here? This says, well, this is just x plus 4. So if x plus 4 equals 0, that means that x equals minus 4. What about this? Now here I've got to distribute that negative sign. That negative sign has to hit everything here. So I see uh, 1 
minus x minus 3. And that's supposed to equal 0. And so what is that? Well, that's going to be minus x minus 2 equals 0. And so what does that mean that x has to equal? Well, that means x should equal negative 2. So in fact, we have two x-intercepts. We have one at negative 2, and we have one at negative 4. So that means that this parabola is going to cross the x-axis at negative 2 and negative 4. Let's see if that, first of all, how that looks and if it makes sense. So will it cross at negative 2 and negative 4? Well, look how symmetric those points are to this axis of symmetry. That makes complete sense. If I got an answer of, let's say, negative 1 and negative 4, I would know something had to be wrong. Because I can't have the center of the parabola, the vertex, be over here and have it cross at these sort of skewed points. It's impossible to have a parabola sort of be more on this end than, and less on this end. It has to be perfectly symmetric. So if I'm one unit over here, I've got to be one unit over here. So it's a good little check and balance right there. This looks good. And now we can sketch in a very accurate picture we see that it sort of is going to be a tight parabola, which is not surprising because that coefficient 2, forget about the negative sign, is bigger than 1. So that tightens things. The negative sign makes it sad-faced. So in fact, there's a very accurate picture of the graph of this. Not too much work, and there we got it.